Hello everybody, there's 125 zero back again with another video, and today I'll be starting my first video on a new series I would like to start, and that would be Weapon Reviews for Battlefield Hardline. Today we'll be going over the MP5K submachine gun, also known as the MP5K in real life. Um, if you guys have never seen this weapon, it's been featured in very many games, including very many Battlefield games. Um... In real life, the weapon is a German-made submachine gun that fires the that fires a 9mm cartridge. Um, it normally comes with anywhere from 15 to 30 rounds in the magazine, and it is a MP5 that has been shortened and made for police work. So, to simply put, um, visuals will be kind of trash when it comes to the actual, like, trying to post stats for these guns. So, I'm sorry about that beforehand to all of you guys. Um, that's mostly because Simthic is no longer, it no longer contains the old weapon stats, so I have to use different, um, I have to, I have to use different methods to find the stats, and they don't, they don't appear visually appealing, so I'm not going to be posting many of the stats, I will tell what the stats are though, and I will probably try and put timestamps for them. Either way, back on with the weapon. So, the MP5 is a weapon that you start the game with, and is unlocked for both classes, for, um, both sides of the game. And that's because each side of the game has their own specific weapon, so if you're a cop, you have one weapon. If you're a criminal, you have another. But the MP5 is unlocked for default for both, and it is your starting weapon for the engineer, aka, I believe it's still engineer, actually. Either way. So, the main thing for this weapon is that, overall, I think it is a very good starter weapon for the class, and I think it is definitely worth using even outside of it being your starting weapon. Um, but, aside from that, let's get into the actual hard stats. So, this weapon fires at 850 rounds per minute, has fully automatic 3 round burst and semi-auto fire modes, and does a whopping... 34 to 12 damage over range. Now, a lot of people are going to be very, very, how do you say, off-put by the fact that this weapon does a measly 12 damage at range. And, to be completely honest, this weapon cannot hold its own at range for anything. But, in close quarters, it is one of the fastest killing weapons in the game. So, take it as you will. Um, its velocity is 420 meters per second, and its magazine size is 20 plus 1, or 25 plus 1, if you have the extended mags attachment. Overall, this weapon, for being a starting weapon for the class, is a very good one. Um, I've had issues using it, but I'll explain those in a few seconds. But overall, I still think this weapon is worth using. I don't think there's a reason to not use it. Aside from maybe if you just don't like the way the weapon feels. And this is one of the few weapons that starts you off with attachments. This weapon's attachments that it starts off with are also all very good for it. Um, to summarize though, this weapon has extremely low range. And is extremely deadly in close range, but outside of that is very weak. Um, my main way of looking at this weapon is the closest thing I can compare it to is the K-10 which is another SMG within the class. And this weapon has... They don't have the exact same time to kill, but they have similar times to kill. And the main reason why I point out these two weapons is that they have terrible range, but in close quarters, they are some of the fastest killing weapons in their class. As well as having extremely low recoil, but extremely bad accuracy. Um... From what I remember reading, the MP5K only has an accuracy of 0.6 degrees, which is very, very bad. It is the worst SMG in the game, accuracy-wise, without attachments. But overall, it's still somewhat good comparison, or somewhat good as a weapon in general. So yeah, as for recommended loadouts, I would say that this weapon, you could run it, in one of two ways. You have the loadout that they start you off with, which is the micro, um, red dot, the suppressor, and the extended mag, 
This is the base version of the weapon, and overall I think it's actually one of the best. Because not only does it allow you to stay off the radar, but you have extended mags, so you can still keep shooting for a little bit longer. Potentially get one or two more kills within close quarters. As for other things I would go over, um, I would recommend also using a comp red dot site, or any red dot site if you're choosing, it doesn't matter too much. The extended mags and the heavy barrel. The reason why I run the heavy barrel is because if you're in a map like the one I'm playing right now, back Backwoods Night, um, one of your main issues with this gun is that even though you have the stealth with the suppressor, you don't have enough range to push it out any further than a couple meters, and that causes issues. Plus, with your lack of accuracy, you're not going to be hitting as many bullets. So that is why I run the heavy barrel, because not only does it give you a bit more range, but it also gives you much better standing accuracy and a bit less recoil. So overall, that's like the most balanced way of playing the gun. Um, as for its iron sights, its iron sights are fairly good. Um, they're not very good at long range, but in the ranges you would most likely be using it, they are fine and usable. And out of a 5 star rating, I would give this weapon a... 3.5 out of 5 stars. This weapon isn't exactly terrible. It's not great. It's a weapon that you should definitely use though, even if you've unlocked other weapons. It's still one that is worth using. But the weapon has a lot of drawbacks to make you have to play it with it in very, very specific ways. So yeah, guys, that is my first episode of Battlefield Hardline Weapon Reviews. I hope you guys enjoyed, and sorry about a bit of the stuttering in here. Um... I'm trying to script these now, especially for the weapon reviews, but with issues coming up and with audio in the background, it gets kind of time consuming, so I've done this like five times. Hopefully in the future, I can make this sound a bit more clear, and now that the introductory episode is done, I can make one of the two more episodes that will be, as I say, more effectively structured. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, in the comments, if anyone wants to know, you can, um, ask for a request on what weapon I should review next. I do not have all the weapons unlocked for this game, sadly, so I won't be able to review every single one, but I will re be able to review any, well, I will be able to review any weapons in the last three DLCs and any of the base game weapons. So yeah, that'll be my thing. I don't know what to call it. Um, I'll be seeing you guys all later, and look forward to at least one to two more reviews today. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will be seeing you all later.